Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. It's March the 22nd, 2019. Like many of you, I'm a boxing fan. I'm a boxing outsider. I'm a sports fan, right? Sports fans have opinions. We'll hear things that really we are not involved in. Right, Mike Trout's new contract in baseball. Bryce Harper's new contract in baseball. The offers for fights. Some of these boxers have been receiving from promoters like Eddie Hearn, Bob Arum. Right, media outlets like Showtime, and we'll have opinions. I'm not pretending here to be involved in any negotiation any fighter is having right I'm not I'm not pretending to have any inside information whatsoever right but here's what I think I know based on the reports the zone offered Deontay Wilder big money right Wilder feels and I believe he's correct about this that if he continues winning right he would be able to make much bigger money. The Zone's offer included a fight against Anthony Joshua and then a rematch against Anthony Joshua, depending on how things fell out. Right? I'm guessing Joshua would have a rematch clause, or at a minimum, the Zone would have the option of showing the rematch if their first fight ended and controversy or was exciting regardless of who won and the fans wanted the rematch now I'll just say this I believe what everyone's saying is the truth Bob Arum who wasn't involved in the deal but who has a contractual relationship now with Tyson Fury through ESPN plus right and clearly wants a Wilder Fury fight to happen down the road. Bob Arum said that Al Heyman and Wilder did the right thing by not accepting the zone's offer. Now I'll just say it just depends on your risk tolerance. It just depends on what you believe. But here's what I think is true. You know, opponents are troublesome. Boxing has few sure things. Wilder was completely undressed. Completely undressed in his last fight. I believe Lennox Lewis used the word exposed. In his last fight by Tyson Fury, who used movement and operated behind a jab. By the way, that's what I mean when I'm talking about boxing on your back foot the way Tyson Fury went about things he's backing up he's throwing a jab backing up and things like that Wilder and I understand the judges had to fight a draw I didn't Wilder lost that fight on my scorecard by several rounds he didn't have an answer for the movement he was absolutely baffled until that first knockdown. I would question whether he won a round before that first knockdown late in that fight. I believe it's the ninth round or so. Right? He was being dominated. Now I'm just telling you that boxing is super competitive. Right? It's very competitive. Fighters study opponents. Fighters look at tape. Understand the fighters have advisors, trainers. They're looking at tape. So I understand. While there's a huge name, still unbeaten, a reigning heavyweight champion, I'm guessing if I walked into a casino right now and you know, heard the odds on the upcoming Wilder Dominique Brazil fight. Wilder's going to be a big favorite. But let me just say 
Brazil now has the blueprint on film on how to completely dominate Deontay Wilder. Brazil has Olympic experience. Understand, it's not all about these champs. Many of these contenders are very highly credentialed. Now I know Brazil got stopped by Anthony Joshua. Right? It's one of Joshua's best victories. I also understand that Brazil has been knocked down in fights. Right? People who want to say that Brazil's chin can be dented actually have that on film. Okay, fair enough. But wow, I got to tell you that just from this seat, after having watched the best made plans involving great heavyweights over the years get derailed, right folks, I'm still waiting for that Lennox Lewis Riddick Bow fight. Right, both guys ended up having some problems in the ring. Larry Holmes was on the verge of matching Rocky Marciano. He was fighting not even a cruiserweight. He was fighting a light heavyweight. He lost that fight to Michael Spinks. Mike Tyson had really a glorified tune-up. Right? He was fighting a guy named Buster Douglas. Outside the Douglas household, let's just say Buster really wasn't known that well. That's the history of boxing. Right? Heavyweights on a roll. They then meet the wrong guy at the wrong time. Right? Lennox Lewis runs into Oliver McCall. Right? Riddick Bowe. Let's remember the name Andrew Galata. I know Riddick Bowe wins those fights, but let's just say you saw the money leaving the building. You saw some of the legacy leaving the building. The way Bowe was being dominated in between the low blows. Right? Mike Tyson was never viewed the same way after he lost to Buster Douglas. Going into that fight, you wondered if anybody could beat Mike Tyson. I remember during the era, they asked a New York multimillionaire, not sure he had the billion yet, about that fight and Donald Trump, just an investor at the time, real estate guy, said, well, let's just say I'd like to see Tyson fight Muhammad Ali to determine who's the best, period. That's how big Tyson was viewed. If you're an MMA person, let's face it, the world changed when Ronda Rousey lost her match to Holly Holm. The point I'm making is the zone offered Wilder $20 million to fight Dominique Brazil. Now keep in mind, it was part of a long-term deal. There is no guarantee, none whatsoever, that Wilder beats Brazil. Maybe he does. Maybe he does so by KO. Maybe he looks as impressive as Joshua did against Brazil. Maybe more impressive. Right? But understand, Brazil has a jab. Knows how to operate. Knows that Wilder can be confused by it. I'll even go further. Boxing has a political component. Right? There's a stretch where we'll give a guy the benefit of the doubt. Right? Where you're watching a fight, not a lot happens, but because the guy is viewed as a celebrity, the judges will give him the slow rounds. Right? I'm just telling you that I've watched that turn in guys' careers. I believe there are many people, not just me, who believe that Wilder got completely undressed by Fury. That the judges made a big mistake. Think about it. A big mistake 
and having Wilder close enough to Fury on the scorecards so that the knockdown in the 12th round even mattered. In other words, the Fury crowd says, okay, they're two 10-8 rounds. Right? That's a four-round differential. And even with that four-round differential, if you believe Tyson Fury won the fight, you believe Tyson Fury beat Wilder by more than four rounds the rest of the fight. I'm here to say he, he won well more than four more rounds than Wilder the rest of the fight. Right? So, to Deontay Wilder, I'll just say this. I'll agree that if you continue winning, if you beat Dominique Brazil, if you continue to win, sure, you'll make more than $40 million fighting a fighter the caliber of Anthony Joshua. Right? I'm guessing the next Tyson Fury fight is going to be a financial bonanza. Right? I'll agree. Keep winning. The money is bigger and bigger. But the reason you sign a long-term deal is because you know that winning's not a certainty. That the sport is competitive. Right? Now, if... Deontay Wilder were someone like Andre Ward, a guy who was gifted boxing, who could beat you convincingly without knocking you out, right? If he's Floyd Mayweather, right? A guy who's a master boxer, could beat you by a wide margin without knocking you out. Then I could look at some of these fights and say, well, gee, if a boxing match breaks out, Ward and Mayweather are going to win it. Right against this contender. But that's not Wilder. Wilder needs to knock you down. To beat you, doesn't he? How many Wilder fights have gone the distance? Isn't the answer two? The first remains to Vern fight. And the Tyson Fury fight. Isn't the only thing Wilder did well in that Tyson Fury fight was knock him down twice. Right? Apart from that, you weren't watching that fight and thinking, wow, Wilder's putting on a master class boxing. So I'll just say, I know people are criticizing Eddie Hearn for the offer to Wilder, and I know I've ripped Eddie Hearn in the past. I still don't know why they were clinging to a $15 million flat fee last year in their offer to Wilder to fight Joshua, a figure that was way too low. When Wilder's people were saying, hey, we'll pay $50 million, right? And keep in mind, Wilder's people, Al Heyman, Shelley Finkel, have a long history in the sport. Their word should have been enough. It wasn't a phantom offer. Right? But let's just say, if I'm wilder, I have to realize I'm not a master boxer. I have to realize that the early rounds against Luis Ortiz, hell, the early rounds against Gerald Washington were competitive. That some people watching the fight, let me raise my hand here, might have had me losing most of the early rounds against those guys. I have to realize that when I stepped up against a more master boxer who's in his prime, right? Luis Ortiz is close to 40, Tyson Fury about a decade younger. I didn't do so well when it came to the boxing part. Right, so if I'm Wilder, given that my career has been all or nothing, given that a lot of my wins are against people like Chris Ariola, given that I have been hit hard in fights, if you doubt me on that, look at his fight against Eric Molina, who was this close to becoming heavyweight champion. 
right this close. So at this stage, offers of $20 million to fight Dominique Brazil, a former Olympian, a skilled fighter, a guy who is elite enough to have already fought for the heavyweight championship, right? Um, or at least to have already fought Anthony Joshua. If I'm Wilder, I try to make sure that I have a floor. Right? Eddie Hearn was offering him a $20 million floor. Right? That's not something to sneeze at. I understand maybe the other offers are with people you know better. Maybe you consider Showtime to be family and stuff like that. Okay, that's all fine and good. But I want people here online to read closely Bob Arum's support of Heyman and Wilder backing away from the DAZN offer. Right? Aram says, you know, good for them. They should have backed away. Wilder will make far more money. And here's the key phrase. If he continues winning. Right? If he continues winning. Right? If you're not a master boxer, if you're a slugger, for whom the vast majority of your wins have come by KO, if you've been in fights where a sizable portion of the crowd, sizable, it doesn't have to be the majority, it just has to be enough people in the crowd, let's say, 30% of the crowd believes that you lost a fight where you got two knockdowns. If your opponent is a big man like you, who might be able to use length, just like the big opponent who you knocked down twice, and who many fans believe then got robbed on the decision did, right? Fury uses length against against Wilder, right? He's hitting a jab, he's too far away to be touched. Right? How do we know Dominique Brazil won't be able to do stuff like that? Put differently, I don't view the Wilder-Brazil fight as that much of a mismatch. Put another way, Wilder beat Luis Ortiz. If they announced a rematch on that fight, I'd be leaning toward Ortiz, especially if he's an underdog. In other words, Wilder is high risk. Right? He's high risk if you're investing in him. There's a reason why Anthony Joshua, every five minutes now, is calling out Deontay Wilder, right? You notice you don't hear him calling out Tyson Fury a lot, do you? You don't hear him demanding to fight Alexander Usyk, do you? Right? No, he wants Wilder, right? Because I believe he understands those other guys would be more difficult. The other day, by the way, Lennox Lewis was talking about the fighters out there. And he admitted that if he came back, the toughest opponent for him would be Tyson Fury. Right to the boxing press, Lennox Lewis is still around. Go up to him, ask him. Right? But, um, you know, he, he admitted <laughs> that Tyson Fury would be the toughest guy. Not Wilder. So in a sport where Lewis himself lost in his prime, Riddick Bowe lost in his prime, Mike Tyson lost in his prime, 
right? Let's not split hairs. I know some people are going to say, well, you know, Tyson's prime is 88, not 90. Okay, come on. You know, Mike Tyson lost in his 20s, right? In this sport, where Evander Holyfield was fighting a smaller guy, got absolutely destroyed by James Toney. Right? I just don't know how in that sport, given that history, in the heavyweight division, right, the heavyweight division, one where James Braddock beats Max Beer, who was considered dominant at the time. Right? How could anyone just laugh at a $20 million guarantee to fight a leading contender. Right? So, to sum up, when I heard that Bryce Harper signed his deal in baseball, when I heard that Mike Trout signed his deal, I thought to myself, you know what? Now that sports gambling is getting legalized in the United States, Conceivably, these guys could have made more if they had signed shorter deals and then renegotiated, right? Done things the way LeBron James does things, right? Short-term deals, then you get the next contract and the salary cap's gone up and you get more money. But I understood it, right? I thought, you know what? They're guaranteeing themselves money here. They're giving themselves a floor. Were I Deontay Wilder, I'd be thinking about giving myself a floor. Right? If he fights tough competition at heavyweight, he's going to be at risk. There are going to be some guys who are going to be hard to knock down. And if he can't knock them down, I'm going to question whether he cannot box them. Right? It's a fight style thing. Let's face it. If it goes to a decision, unless Wilder is fighting a potted plant, or unless the judges are the people who were scoring the Luis Ortiz fight, I don't even understand those judges' scorecards, right? Ortiz loses the fight by stoppage, but even with stoppages, you need to look at the scorecards afterwards and say, what kind of job were the judges doing? Right? Wilder can't be assured of judges who are that generous. Hell, he could get the judges from the Tyson Fury fight. What fight were they watching? Right? If a boxing match breaks out in a Deontay Wilder fight, he's at risk, even against Dominique Brazil. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. If they offered you $20 million as part of a long-term deal to fight Dominique Brazil. Do you walk away from the table? Do you think seriously about the possibility that Brazil might beat you? Understand, Carlos Monzon, one of the great middleweights in history, had some losses on his record from early in his career. Marvin Hagler, one of the great middleweights in history, had some losses, right, from early in his career. Bernard Hopkins, I've just named, <laughs> I've just named arguably the three best middleweights in history. Bernard Hopkins, I believe, loses a fight early in his career, right? Great fighters can lose fights. We just saw that happen this last weekend to Mikey Garcia. Right? When a promoter is offering you a $20 million guarantee, in my opinion, that's a serious offer. I'll agree. I'll agree the back end of the deal where he's only getting $40 million, right, to fight Anthony Joshua needed to be beefed up. I'll agree with that, especially if you're going to talk about a rematch too, right, with, with additional monies. Okay, that's fair. But I'm just going to say the offer Eddie Hearn made wasn't that bad, 
right? Let me also say, too, I hope Wilder looks around him at all the people and all the adulation and stuff like that. You hang around this sport long enough, you're going to see guys in their late 30s who used to have that, who then lost the fight and whose entourage then lost 50% of their members. Right? Don't get fooled by these speculative deals where they say, if you continue winning, you'll get all this money. Boxing has no such guarantee. Right? As I've said before, great fighters lose fights. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.